I thought I'd start this afternoon with a story. After all, we are a continent of stories, right? So this is the story of a small child, a small girl, and an elephant. So the girl goes with her dad to the zoo, and she sees a huge elephant in a, you know, it's not even a cave, it's just an open area. There's a little fence and a little uh, thread, and the elephant is very sad. So the little girl asks her dad, why is the elephant very sad? The dad says, I don't know, and they call the zookeeper. And they ask the zookeeper, why is the elephant so sad? And the zookeeper says, you know, look out there, there's a forest. The elephant wants to be in that forest. It doesn't want to be right here. And uh, so the girl says, then what is holding the elephant? The elephant is so huge, all it needs is for it to walk out of the fence and go. There's nothing holding the elephant. And the zookeeper says, when the elephant first came here, it was this small. And the pole was this wide, and the chain was this thick, and the fence was this high. So the elephant tried to get away for one day, for two days, for three days. It tried for 10 days to get away, and it couldn't get away. And it resigned itself to the fact that it just can't get away. Even though the forest is so close, it just decided it can't get away. What the elephant doesn't know is that it's become huge now. And all it takes for it is to move its head once, and it'll be out there. But it doesn't know it in its mind. So when we talk about agility, when we talk especially about Asia, I think of the story a lot. Because it's not just agility of the body, it's the agility of the mind that is necessary for us to reach our true potential. You know, in my 30 years that I've been away in US, I used to be very irritated about the stories that come from especially India and Asia in general, apart from being poor countries that need money and exotic lovers and whatever else people don't understand. What the heck is Asia all about? And I realized that it's okay to be angry about something, but if you want to do something, you need to do it in your own voice. It's not about someone else coming and telling your story. You need to take that opportunity to tell the story in the voices of those that are actually doing something great. So when we decided to come to India about uh, three years ago, four years ago, I went to, I was, have been attending TED conference for a long time. So I went to TED and said, hey, why don't I host TED in India? Because I thought it's a great way to come test the waters. And I started coming to India and telling everybody, well, you know TED, you know, I'm gonna bring TED to India. And they would be like, why didn't Mr. TED come to meet us? And I was like, well, there is no Mr. TED. TED actually stands for Technology Entertainment Design. Then the next question is, why isn't the white man here? Why this little brown woman, why are you here? So then I had to tell them that, well, you just have to deal with it. This little brown woman is all you're going to get if you want to play. And, um, and what that opened my eyes to a lot of things, and I'm, I'm going to limit my experience only to India, and I don't know if it's true for everywhere else in Asia, is that A, we have a huge awe for something out west. You know, anyone out there, when they say something, it's somehow true. Even for a lot of Indians, they had to go out, prove themselves for them to be celebrated in India. That's the first thing. The second thing is we feel age is everything. You know, um, it's sort of, I'm older, so I know better. Even though I actually learn most from my 10-year-olds, and every one of the people that we, uh, you know, we work with at Inc., they're half my age, and I learn a lot from them. So what we decided to do is that let's start a storytelling platform. The first thing we need to do is to showcase how many stories there are that are from different disciplines. That's how innovation happens, is that when you expose yourself to a little bit of science, a little bit of art, a little bit of technology, and you see role models who look like you, act like you, do like you. So the first thing we said is that let's become a great platform for stories. So when you go to inktalks.com, we have over 150 stories, and we want to have them in 10 different languages. And the stories you see are not just of famous people. Only about 10% are people like James Cameron and uh, people like that you would have heard of. 
literally 90% of them are young people who are doing really, really amazing things. The second thing we realized is that in India, there isn't a great ecosystem for young people with great ideas to make their ideas a reality. Because the way we think of investing, the way we think, I give money, I own everything. You know. So we said we'll start a fellows program. We have like 20 people every year. You know, in the previous uh, conversation, they were talking about Aya Bader, um, who, who developed a product. Aya Bader is one of our fellows. And then we have people like, um, you know, Vicky Roy, who was here last year, who's, who used to be a rag picker, and now he's an internationally acclaimed photographer. Shubhendu, who does a forest station, who creates urban forests. All these people are, have great ideas and they are very dedicated to making a difference where they live. In my generation, we all wanted to finish studying and go to America, which is what I did, which is what my husband did, which is all of us did. But the current generation wants to go steady, get the experience, and come back and make a difference here. And the last thing is, if you match the right person on stage with the right audience, amazing things do happen because if you can move people, they will act. So two, three quick examples. We had Sunita Krishnan who came and stood up on a stage and talked about rescuing women from trafficking and how difficult it is for her to have a permanent home. The audience reacted 18 months from the time she stood on the stage. She has a three acre campus where all the women who she rescues live there and have an amazing life. Shubhendu, who's one of our fellows, does a forest station. He stood up and talked on stages. Literally 10 to 12 acres of land has been given to him to turn it into forest. So the point is collecting and connecting people is what we do and it works. And to give you a little uh, insight into the kind of people uh, we support, I have here with me Ranak. Thanks, Lakshmi, for that introduction. Good afternoon. I know I'm the first guy after this lunch, so I hope you guys are not sleeping out there. Uh, I'm not for media. I'm a hardcore tech guy. I love to build and hack things. And what always fascinated me is this. In India, when you walk in the streets of Mumbai, Delhi, or anywhere, you'd find the small and medium business owners everywhere. A grocery shop, a restaurant owner, an apparel boutique. You'll find all kinds of businesses across all the streets in India. But these guys are everywhere. There are 47 million SMBs in India. And they employ 100 million people out there. Almost 10% of the population of India is employed by these guys. And they contribute to 8% of our GDP. It's a huge, they give a huge contribution to our society. But these are the problems they face today. 68% of the small business owners have one common problem. How do they find new customers? And the second most common problem they have is how do they retain their loyal customers? Or how do they engage with their customers? Because as a business owner, it's very important to tell your customers what are the latest updates. If you have an offer out there during a local festival, how do you inform your loyal customers that this is what the offer is going on in your store? So how do we help them? Or is there any untapped market that they can get onto and get new customers? So now let's look at the other side of the picture, the consumer side of things. This is the new story happening in India. Today, we are the third largest online population in the globe. And that is going by 31% year on year. Just to give you the type of users who are online is this. Women between the age of 35 to 44 and men less than 35 are the heaviest internet users in India. And that's the reason why apparels, clothes, are the most searched entity online, because of course, women within 35 to 40 years, they want to do shopping, clothing, and all that stuff, right? More than electronics, clothing is the highest search entity in India. So how do we connect a neighborhood merchant to the person looking for their product or their service in that local area online? How do we connect the two dots? So let me tell you the, a real story, which would tell you how, sim how simplicity can really solve this problem. This is Nilima. And she is a 27-year-old first-time entrepreneur who runs her own boutique called Avanti Studios. When I first time met her, she was doing pretty well uh, by word of mouth and stuff like that. And she had recently started Kids Fashion Line because you know when moms come to buy stuff, they want to also buy things for their kids. Interestingly, 
Google has today become a synonym for internet. Every SMB knows that what's Google out there. They might not know internet, they might not know a website, but they know Google. They know that people are searching online. There are some 6.4 billion searches happening in India every month, which is huge. So how does she tap in the market? She's confused. The first and foremost problem is, how do you make a website? And trust me, that is still a tough task. What will you do? You would call a friend, hey, I need a website, and he would, he would hook up to your local website developer, who would come and sit with your store, uh, note down requirements, home page, product page, and what have we, take the content. It's a 15 to 30 day process. Getting a website is 15 to 30 day process. And if you go to the self-serve market, like you know, GoDaddy or a Big Rock, the first thing they ask you, book a domain. What on earth is a domain for an SMB perspective? And once you book the domain, they'll ask you, how much GB of space do you need? How many pages do you need? Where do you want to host your servers? Imagine a local business knowing answers to all these questions. It is a tough thing. Second, let's say you get a website done. What next? How do you get customers? What would you do of a website if it doesn't give you any business? So how does the search and optimization work out there? Third, every small business owner has an update. During every local festival, these guys put up a poster that 10% off uh, end, end of season sale, uh, new, a new collection of Adidas Reebok shoes out there, and stuff like that. But you would not find that information on their website, even if they have one. Because updating a website is again, an, again another problem. They have to call the website developer, hey, can you please update my website? He will note down requirements. And by the time he updates the website, Christmas is gone. Though your Christmas deal is anyway invalid anymore. So how do we solve it? What I found is that all these small business owners had one common technology among them, and that's a mobile phone. Now, but to connect them to internet, I needed something, a data going out of the phone to somewhere. And that's where SMS was a huge help. If you look at SMS is nothing but a text, a data, going from your phone to some cloud. So why can't SMS be the internet for you? So what we built is this. Pick up any feature phone, and just send float to 56, we have a short code out there, 56767878, and then we ask you, what's your business name? You, again, type in a business name, like, okay, Avanti Design Studios, send, and then we ask you, okay, tell me your exact business address in Mumbai. We find out which uh, areas of phone registered. You, again, type in, okay, road number X, area one, Mumbai, and bang, you go live. Through SMS, flat 13 minutes, you have your own website up and running, and that, really excites the merchants. A guy who never had access to internet, no smartphones, no PC required, using a simple feature phone, can now go online in flat 13 minutes and just three SMS. So okay, you get your website up and running, so what? How do you update it now? Simple, since your phone is registered with us, pick up your phone and any time of the day, any day of the week, just type in a message, let's say, you know, uh, new fashion trends are coming back, uh, come down to the store to check out the latest designs of you know, some XYZ brand, send it, and it bang goes live on your website. It, it's like a Twitter kind of thing, right? So you update anytime you want. You pick up a phone and a message and it'll update your site. Well, you update your site, your site is up there, but then how do you get customers, right? You're updating pretty frequently. How do you get customers? So we have a lot of machine learning algorithm now, which learns from the updates sent by the merchant and automatically optimizes it for local search. Today in Google, if you search for a tunic capris in Hyderabad, or in fact, if you search for a simple ice cream cafe in Hyderabad, you'd find our customers right up there, organic search, no inorganic traffic, right up there in Google results. Because we, have, we expect the merchant to create the content, and we take the onus to make the content relevant so that they come up higher in Google results. And it's completely general machine learning. And that's what we call the magic of local SEO. So to, just to summarize what Nowflows does, A, instant presence. Instant gratification is one of the key elements for an SMB. We, we deliver the product before even while we're talking to him. The product is up there. The product is live out there. And B, local discovery. He, anyone searching for, let's say, a T-shirt in Bangalore, or in fact in US, let's say someone is searching for a T-shirt in Boston, and if you have a store online, we promise that your, your result will come up in Google results. So local discovery. Third, we also help them to engage with the local customers, loyal customers. Every time you send an update, all your loyal customers get the update. So your customers are aware of what's happening at their store. 
we see this as the beginning of a new era. We see amazing behaviors out there. Let me share you some insights. First thing, what we realize is that this is a global need. This map is a heat map. It shows what all the customers of now floats across the globe. What we realized is the problem of discovery, the local discovery, is just not necessary to India. An SMB anywhere in the globe actually needs a discovery. Imagine you having a shoe shop in Boston. Do you think you would like to, your store to be found in Google, right? So local discovery is a problem statement which every SMB needs today. So when we saw, okay, uh, imagine an SMB pretty high up the chain, he has a smartphone, so we thought, okay, how do we help them? So we launched something called Nowfloats Boost on, I, on all smartphones, which gives you the power of Nowfloats on a simple app. The same ease of updating and ease of getting discovered. This is what I was talking about. You search for Ice Cream Cafe in Hyderabad, and this guy's out there. And of course, you can generate as many leads as possible, et cetera. And then the best part is it's pay per use. You, as outside India, you can download the app, set up a store, and then if you want, then you can upgrade it to the premium st stuff. This led to, we have today 10,000 small businesses using the platform across 50 countries in the globe. The second biggest learning for us was that simplicity works. If you ever build any solution for a small business, please make it simple. Just to show you some stats. These are the kind of updates month on month we get from every business. Today on our platform, a business updates his website once in a week. I mean, I, I never heard of that. I usually thought that a business would update his website maybe once in six months or maximum once in a quarter if he's savvy enough. But on our platform, people update once in a week. And if you look at the blue line represents how many number of updates coming from SMS. The red line represents number of updates coming from the app. The, the greenish line, Depends number of updates coming from, a, we also have a web management portal, that number of updates coming from there. Now this shows how important it is to be mobile and simple. You have to give your users a simple way while they're on the move to be able to deal with the system. You cannot expect your users to open up a laptop, open up a desktop, log into the URL, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't work. So we see amazing behaviors out there. Just to give you examples, look at what ice cream store guy, look at what he updates. Talks about his new store which is opening talks about a new store and stuff like that. So we see interesting behaviors out there about what kind of updates do these guys make. The third most important learning was no business needs a website. What they need is actually more customers and that is nothing but more discovery. That's what businesses need. They really don't need a website. Talking about a small business owner. And that led to enterprise customers who already had their websites because these guys have made a fancy website but they struggle with local discovery. This guy, Nikun Shah, is one of our customers who runs a huge recruitment agency across Africa. So all his Africa store, Africa pages are powered by Nowfloats, where today if you search for a manufacturing job in Zambia or a HR recruitment agency in Nigeria, you find his website out there. So we act as a plugin and help even big enterprises get discovered. So in India, we work with companies like Nokia, Samsung, Mom and Me, all these guys, all their retail stores are on a platform because every retail needs local discovery. Thank you. If you have a local business, please download the app. That's a smartphone app. And if you know anyone in India, ask them to send an SMS float to 56767878, and then the magic begins for the discovery. Thank you. Prana, can you just forward it? So, what we found is people like Ranak, who have these great ideas, you know, we used to look for them even in India in only like the top universities, the IITs or from Harvard's and MIT's to come back. But what it is, just as he's looking at SMEs, in every local tier two, three cities, and you know, there are amazing ideas that are coming out. The young people are ready to change, but are we ready? to give them the platform to do it. And for us at Inc., you know, um, in one way, Inc. stands for innovation and platform, but really what it stands for me is that whether you write or print, you need Inc. But Inc. is nothing. It takes shape in the hands of those who do something with it. Similarly for us, Inc. will be successful by the success of those who stand on the platform. So when we find people like Ranak with great ideas. I mean, he's somebody who went to a, you know, a school in Bihar, Orissa, and then went to US to work in Microsoft and decided to come back because he really wants to do this startup. 
And I realized that our role as elders has changed. I have nothing to teach him. In fact, I only have something to learn from him. But all I can do is open doors and be a coach. So from a teacher or a person who is you know, uh, experienced, I have become just a conductor, a coach. So that's the big learning that we need to go through. So there are three opportunities for all of us. The first thing is, are we ready to take a chance in a way that's not just comfortable? It's not just tweaking a little bit of whatever we are doing to go fast forward a little bit. It's about con completely jumping forward to an abyss that we don't know where we're going to land. And the second thing is, are we willing to listen to the youth? I mean, really listen, not just talk over, but really, really listen. And finally, the most important thing, at least I face in India, is that we have to learn to pay for it. We want everything for free, you know, and we really need to learn to pay and support a lot of these young people. So I want to wrap up with, why do I do this? You know, why is this? important for me to do this now is I have to tell you the story of my own experience with my father. You know, my father always uh, was my best friend. And, uh, and I was in US, I was working for Intel, I was busy being whatever, and uh, on my career track. And I would come to India maybe once a year for about a couple of weeks. And uh, this one time uh, in 1997, I was supposed to come home, but some big PR opportunity came and they wanted to do some interview of me. So I was not going to come to India because this was a great opportunity for me to be seen in front of a million people or whatever it is. So I called my dad to tell him that I may not be able to come home that holidays. And then he said, um, that he said, no, I really want you to come. He said, suppose something happened to me today and I died, you would find the time to come. So don't bother coming when someone dies, bother coming when somebody's alive. So I decided, okay, you know, I was, I, I, I kind of woke up from my whatever uh, path I was on and I came home. And that's the first time I left the country in 1983. This was in 97. That's the first time I spent my, hol my birthday with him. And I spent 20 days. We had a great time. And he was, he was in a wheelchair at that time. And he was insisted on coming to the airport. And I was like, Dad, you know, I mean, it's OK. You know, we'll say bye here. He said, no, 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 I want to come to the airport. He came to the airport. And I still remember you know, saying bye to him. And I think about it now. And that's the last time I saw him. And I got a call in December saying that he was dying. And I realized one thing is that it's not, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about what do I do it, how do I do it, but when we do it is important. It was important for me to go home at that time, not a week later, not a month later. So I feel when I look at the young people, when I look at the Ronaks of the world, they are screaming. They want to make a difference. But are we ready to do it now? Do we have the agility of the mind to support them now? So we welcome you to join Inc. in any way you want. Watch the talks, and please write your comments. We are doing a fellows program all across America in May. Support it any way you want. Join the conference in October. But whatever you do, whatever you decide to do, do it now, not just what or how, but when you do something is most important, and the time is now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lakshmi. I have some tissues here for you in case. Before you go, would you like to take some questions? Do you have questions for Lakshmi? Great media product, right? Content is king, as we heard during the break, although... <laughs> Distribution is just as important. I agree. I agree. And that's why I'm here. Hopefully, you all will have ideas on how to distribute. Well, how are you doing it? In particular, in view of the fact that although the number is growing, the number of people who have broadband access in India as a percentage of the population is still low. Do you find that as a limitation? You know, it is low, but it's about 15% penetration, which is about 150 million people, which is half the population of America. So even if we can get to them, it's great, but what we find is that we need to partner with people 
who know how to distribute it uh, to get it out. And you know, we are getting we have some of the talks have a million views, and sometimes you put the right thing, it just catches on. But we definitely now need to spend the uh, resource it takes to spread it out. That's why we are here. All right. Any comments, questions, concerns? All right, ladies and gentlemen, okay. Lakshmi, Thank thanks you. once again.